So you clicked on this video because you wanted to learn something about Gears 5. Well, you've come to the right place. My name's Dutch and welcome to my Gears 5 tutorial on how to move and arm yourself to the teeth before diving into the world that is Gears of War. I've played and combined hours of probably 15,000 or more over these last 13 years that this series has been out. And in that time, I've picked up a thing or two that I would like to teach you to help you start your journey in Gears and hopefully teach other people the same thing. Now here's someone I want you to meet. This is Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob, huh? Okay. <laughs> Uncle Bob is your average no life Gears of War veteran that's been playing for as long as I have. And Uncle Bob represents what we represent. A Terminator. A cold blooded machine that will kill you at any given time. But there's a solution. This is you. Well, not yet, but you will be this when you follow these tips that I'm about to share with you. You ready for this? I thought so. Suit up, lock and load, and let's get into it. First off, we need to check your settings. We're going to start with controller because that's what I play on and that's what I know most people play on. But I'll also cover PC in this guide. For look and target, I keep mine on 28. Now I would suggest you start somewhere around 20 and move up from there if you feel like it's too slow or if you can do better. Um, the reason for that is because most of these movements require your camera to be fast enough to turn um, in order to do them properly. And if your camera turns too slow, then you're just not going to make it. Keep your inner dead zone somewhere around four or five, depending when your sticks start drifting, because you want to keep it as snappy as possible, but also not just aim by itself, of course. And when it comes to PC, from what I know, it's best to turn your mouse settings all the way down and purely rely on your window settings in the game. Make sure your roadie run exit time is zero so you minimize any delays coming out of the roadie run. And all I've really changed in the main mechanics and the main keybinds is the take cover button and the roadie run button are both on my mouse. If that's possible for you, I would suggest you do that. It helped me a lot with keeping my movement very precise. Uh, but if that's not possible for you, make it a key dedicated to just these two movements. This will prevent you from misrolling a lot of the time. Now onto the video itself. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. You do need to realize that Gears of War is a very hardcore shooter. This is not a game for weak-willed people that will quit on an instant. You can compare it to Dark Souls that whatever you're doing, if you're getting killed by an enemy, it's usually your own fault because you don't know what to do against it. And it works the same way in Gears of War. Um, wall bouncing and movement in general are like wall running to the Titanfall and building to Fortnite. Sure, you can kind of get by without, but if you want to get better and you want to beat better players, you're going to have to learn this for the sake of knowing what to do and when to do it. Another important aspect of all of this is that everything in Gears is situational. So you just never know what's around the corner and thus the best way to prepare for that is to make yourself as hard to kill as possible. And that's what I'm trying to teach you with my guide. It's not a one stop shop for absolutely everything in the game because there is no way I can cover any of that. And I do want to make sure that you understand that this is not even a fraction of what's possible in the game and just the first beginning steps. Now let's start with the absolute basics, the 180. A 180 can be done anywhere in the map as long as there is enough distance between you and the wall in front of you and the wall behind you. Now keep in mind, like you see in the video, that you do not jump too far from the wall because that will always make you roll. You have to consider the distance from you to the wall at all times, no matter what you're doing in this game, always keep that in mind. Now in order to do a 180, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is hold your movement key forward towards the wall or the direction that you're going and press the cover button. In this case, A on controller if you're playing default or space on the keyboard. Now, while you're sliding towards the wall, you need to turn your camera towards the direction that you came from. Now, when you're practicing this, you want to make sure you are as precise as possible and as perfect as possible. The reason for that is again, the fundamentals. If you cannot do these basic things first and you want to do all the risky, cool stuff, you're most likely going to fail a lot more than succeed. So take the time to learn this. Some of the best players in the world don't wall bounce super flashy or very quick, but they are very precise and very controlled under pressure. And that's what matters. You start slow, you learn, 
you built yourself up and eventually when push comes to shove you are the one that wins because you are way better under pressure because you've practiced all this time now one of the ways you can practice wall bouncing at any time in the game is to create shapes and in the example in the video you're going to see me create the x shape by making a one two three four points on the screen and going back and forth between that clockwise and counterclockwise this will help you recruit those patterns in your brain so that when you're fighting somebody you're not getting lost in the movement you know exactly what to do because it's one of your fundamentals now keep in mind you can make all types of different shapes and move in all types of different ways but the main thing is you always have to master it first in a private or something like that something that's not stressful because if you can't do it without stress then you probably won't be able to do it with stress so in these next two examples you're going to be witnessing two things a relatively safe approach to a target and a relatively risky approach to a target now in the first example you'll see the safe way wall bounce once and walk up to the target now depending on the situation this can be effective of course but the critique of this type of method is that number one it takes more time number two it does not make you a hard target to hit and number three what if you miss what if the player moves out the way now in the second example you'll see me wall bounce twice once to the initial wall once to the second wall now the pro of this is that you are setting yourself up as a target towards the second wall which makes the enemy aim towards that direction that you're going now the second wall bounce is obviously going back and going in for the one shot kill now the obvious risk to this is that you're setting yourself up to be killed in one single shot if they hit and that's where all your skill comes in no matter where you've practiced whether it's campaign or escape or horde or core versus ai it doesn't matter as long as you apply these types of fundamentals whenever you play you'll learn to judge much faster when it's time to take the one shot or when it's not now let's move on to one of the techniques to use while wall bouncing or defending yourself against wall bouncers. The up A. Now the up A is one of the most common used techniques in Gears of War. No matter whether you're trying to one shot someone on a corner or around the wall or trying to chase someone down, it doesn't matter. People will use it all the time. And here's how it works. You can start from a position away from the wall or on the wall itself and hold forward on your movement key as soon as you're ready press the cover button in this case a or space on keyboard to move your character forward while you're doing this you want to pull the right trigger or your shoot button that way as the animation flows you fire off a shot now one big thing to keep in mind is to always keep your aim level with the map do not start aiming down at the player because chances are you're going to be missing your shot by shooting straight into the floor it's a very common mistake I see happen all the time. It's because people keep forgetting to keep their aim perpendicular with the ground. Now, another thing to always consider is the distance to the target relative to your up A position. Now, what I mean by that is that depending where someone's standing or sitting, you might not actually get a one shot kill. Or you might. This depends on how much damage has been done to the target already or your position in the shot itself. Now keep this in mind when you're fighting someone because it might make or break the end of the fight. Now let's move on to the back A, which is the defensive variation of an up A. The back A can be used in multiple scenarios for offensive and defensive purposes. For this example I'm showing you now, you'll see the defensive purpose, but later on in the video I'll also show you how you can use it while being aggressive. So to do a back A, you slide into the wall or you start from the corner or wall that you're at, you pull back on your left stick or your movement key and you press the fire key. Make sure you focus on your timing first because if you shoot too soon, you're going to shoot behind you or in the floor. And if you shoot too late, you're going to shoot into the wall in front of you. It has to be a nice mix in between. The back A is mostly used when setting up for a target coming towards you or when you have to hit somebody without exposing yourself. Now these next clips you're seeing are realistic depictions of what can happen during a match. You're being shot at by an enemy at an elevated position, but there is a way towards them to take the fight towards them. However, you're going to have to cross the fire in order to get to them. Now one of the purposes of this video is to showcase that how a fight starts is not necessarily how it's going to end. 
enemies will move on your screen. They will adapt to your position and will attempt to keep as much distance between you and them. To show you an example of this, I've cut it down to about four examples. Two where the enemy stays in the same place and two where the enemy switches spots. Now one big thing that I want you to pay attention to is that when you take damage is the omen that appears on the screen. Because the omen actually gives you the direction of where the player is, even when they've stopped shooting you. It's a big key in Gears to use the damage to your advantage. Because sometimes it's not enough to just pay attention to what's happening on the screen. You have to make a quick call and a quick change in judgment depending on your own health in the game. What you'll also see is me using the back A as an offensive measure to defend myself against the target that's coming towards me, even though I was the aggressor. A couple pointers to help you along the way with these scenarios is number one, always be reloaded before you start a fight, if possible, of course. Number two, always have a plan B, unless plan B is not an option for like King of the Hill and such. And the third one is do not telegraph your movement. Do not wait too long for an opening. When you see it, take it. But also do not play the same play over and over. Chances are when you're playing something that is a respawn game mode, such as Guardian, TDM, King of the Hill, etc., people will adapt to the same situation every time. So in this case, you see four examples of the same scenario. Chances are if you're playing against one player in that same scenario, they're going to know what's coming if you move the same way. So keep that in mind when you start pushing somebody or defending against someone that you don't defend the same way every single time. Try to keep it fresh and try to keep people on their toes and not be predictable. And the last portion of the video, probably the most important part of the entire thing is to realize that Gears is a team game. No matter how good you get, you always have to play with your teammates. Um, I'm saying this as a 13 year old veteran of Gears of War that no matter how good you get you can never do enough for your teammates. If you want to go fast you go alone, if you want to get far you go together. Everybody knows this but your team is as strong as the weakest link. If you're playing a respawn based game mode most of the time you're going to be losing because your bad teammates don't want to work together and it says it right there, bad teammates. In the example you see in the background, the idea is that no matter who you are on your team, whether you're the guy supporting your teammate or you're the guy that's being the aggressor, use every opportunity for one another. If you're the supporting teammate, make sure you spot the enemy for your rushing teammates. And if you're the aggressive teammate, make sure you use that opportunity to its full potential. I cannot hammer on this enough, boys and girls. Make sure you do everything in a team environment and not just for yourself. Learn the game individually and with your friends, of course. But as soon as you jump into something like Ranked, make sure you play your role. You take responsibility for what you're doing. Because I promise you, once you start doing that and you build up a group of people that you can play with, you'll enjoy the game much more and you'll get a lot more playtime out of it. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you've learned something. If you did, please leave a like and a comment what was most helpful to you. Make sure to share this video as well with your friends if they've just bought Gears. It's a niche hard game to get into, but once you do, it will not let you go. I hope you have the best time you can have on Gears. And I want to give a huge shout out to everybody that's helped me create this video. Take care, guys. See you on the battlefield. Uncle Bob? Okay. <laughs>